straight from the realm of all things gaming. Everything Noob starts now. Episode 113 of the Everything Noob podcast. I am Vortac, and joining me this evening, Mr. Dreadlow. What's happening? I'm, a, I'm gonna be a streaming machine here soon. Nice. And yeah, I'm, I, oh. <laughs> well, I was just gonna say, okay. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm now uh, moved. I'm gonna try Hitbox for a little bit. So anybody that's out there that watches my streams, head on over to Hitbox. Same name, Dreadle Gaming. Boom. Nice. G- game over. <laughs> and Miss Jimmy. I can only manage three star wanted level on GTA Online. That's it. I'm a criminal, but not a big time criminal. No, you just gotta. All you gotta do is find like a choke point and have the cops keep coming at you and just pop them. <laughs> I don't like to like shoot the cops though. I like to run. Like the the thrill of driving away is too much. <laughs> and uh, we are, I, I guess, a band of misfit streamers and YouTubers. <laughs> yeah, basically. And this is yeah. our botched intro. Welcome to the show. Uh, every week on the Everything New Podcast, we pick a theme, and the theme for this week is streaming, but not the kind of streaming we normally talk about. Uh, we're talking about the streaming that occurs uh, that's a new thing. You can actually now, in some cases, stream video games as if you stream television shows and movies on Netflix, for example. And uh, there are a few services out there for that. We are going to discuss that tonight and possibly actually live streaming video games as well if we have time, uh, as well as a few other things. So thanks for joining us. And I'll kick things off by talking about the story that just broke that kicked off this topic in the first place. Uh, Sony announced their pricing for their uh, streaming service on the PS4. And I don't know if you guys caught that or not. Yeah, (coughs) Which is a little different. 15 bucks for like three months, 20 bucks for a single month. Well, it's 15 bucks a month if you do 44 something for the three months. Yeah, that's it. It's fit. Yeah, you have to buy it a bundle in three months of $15 a month, or you can just get one month of service for 20 bucks. Now, they used to, their whole format used to be like you rent games, right? <clears throat> on, or you PlayStation? Yeah, no, 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 no. You yeah, or, they had a a service where you could um buy the game or buy a rental basically and for like I think it was 2 weeks you could play the game for a price and I've heard a lot of people really complain about the service because the streaming is god awful which I can only imagine it is after their immense DDoS attack over the holidays. And then they have the balls. They have massive balls to be like, here's our pricing plan for our new internet service. (laughs) Yeah. mm -mm. (laughs) It's just, it's crazy to me because... I was looking at that, and I'm looking at that in the price of, like, Netflix. And it's really hard to compare the two because binging on a TV show happens a lot differently than binging on, say, a video game. Like, you could spend a whole month playing one video game. You could get through a TV show in a week if you really binged it. Depends on the TV show. It depends on so many different factors. Like, if, if how many episodes the TV show has, how long each episode is. Video games, it's just like, you know generally games have an average time span that they're you know the length and it also depends on the sandbox game where it's free roaming and whatever so it's a hard comparison to make but really if you just look at the numbers you're looking at like eight nine dollars a month for netflix versus probably 20 bucks a month because i I see a lot of people doing this in like one month spurts like i want to try this what is this they pay the 20 dollars. maybe they like it and they're like i'll just let it roll and they forget that they could have saved some money and I mean, that's how I am. I don't ever pre-plan. If I'm going to play World of Warcraft, I pay the one you know time fee every month, the 15 bucks a month, instead of saving mon- money and buying three months because I don't know how long I'm going to play it. So they get right, a whole right. bunch of money out of me. Like right now, I'm not playing it, you know? But and if paying. I would have bought like a three months in advance, I would have lost out. See? Oh, yeah, exactly. But you would have been paying. <clears throat> right. But, you know, uh, I've talked about this in the past, uh, live.com. Isn't it or on live? Do, it's on live.com. Yeah. And it's a, it's a video game streaming service. Uh, I have an account. <clears throat> What's so cool about it 
my throat is like messed up today, so please excuse me. But um, um, what what what's so cool about it is they have package deals where you spend nine ninety nine a month, I think it is. It might even be less than that because they might have went down. But it's nine ninety a month, and it's a it, they got a package of about two hundred fifty games that you can play anytime you want. I mean, it's it's and and here's the here's the neat thing with streaming, and uh, I can understand where, where PlayStation is coming from. But with streaming, you could use any 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 computer or even um, a, a like a tablet or something because it's it's streaming everything in high high quality because it's using their servers right their computer and their computer their servers install everything. anything all you're doing is streaming it and you're interacting with it now i would think there'd be a lot of lag in between you know trying to play it and uh you know from from your input and the keyboard or whatever to the actual streamed event or the, the game that you're playing but there really isn't any on live has really got it got it together when it comes to streaming uh, uh video games so you know I, I've always thought that this is this was something that was going to pick up, you know, some somebody else is going to pick it up, not just on Live.com. So and here it is, PlayStation. You know, they're going to be trying to trying to service themselves. Yeah. Here's the problem, though. If PlayStation does a bad <clears throat> job with it, like this is dead in the water. No one's going to want it ever again. And you definitely need good internet. I mean, seriously, well, you're streaming. It's on them you know? too. Yeah, yeah. They, they, yeah, they have to have good servers for it. They have to have good secure servers for it. I don't know about you. I mean, I've been having some Wi-Fi troubles, but Jimmy and I played Grand Theft Auto. Last night, actually, we were playing. And yeah. did you have the problem where any time you get into a loading screen, it takes at least two to three minutes just staring at yes. the screen? Yes. You have that, too. So it's not just me. Yes. When we were just, like, waiting for, like, the instances to change back to free mode versus, like, the little instance runs, it just took forever. Yeah. We, and it just seamlessly, I don't know. It, it works. and I mean, once it actually loads, it seems to run really well. Like, we never had too much of a problem getting into each other's cars or, like, bumping into each other when we should have been, like, walking in the same line. You know what I mean? Like, there are no obvious lag problems. But those loading screens were awful, and that just makes me kind of afraid of what Sony has up their sleeve because their servers for other games aren't that great. So, and, and this is really new and crazy. And personally, unless I maybe they've been testing this and I missed the boat on beta testing it, but unless you want to give it for free for a bit, I think it's a really bad idea to charge 20 bucks a month out of the gate for a service. We have no idea how it performs. I There's a honestly, free seven day trial. I, I'll throw I it in wish they didn't do like the streaming i wish they had like a rental service where it's like here sign up for 15 20 bucks a month and what you're gonna get is access to our uh game library and it, it works like um a library books from your library or something with amazon where if you borrow a book like once so it'll download your rentals, whatever, to your console so it runs it locally. Because this isn't like, every, your console should be able to run this game. They're yeah. all the same. This isn't like on a computer where it's like you have a crappy computer so you'd want to use on live to play games you wouldn't normally be able to play. You're right. Yeah, it's the PS4. Yeah. So it's like to save bandwidth and stuff, why not just download the stuff and then shut off access when they cancel their account and uninstall all that stuff. You have the technology to do that. And if the PlayStation is hacked or whatever or modified, kick them off. Don't let them be able to get online. Yeah. You, Xbox you could, did it on the 360. You can do it on the PlayStation original. Network. Xbox yeah. did it on the original Xbox when you would mod Halo or something. It was crazy. Like if yeah. they found out you were modding Halo you would get kicked off Xbox Live, I think indefinitely or something crazy. Like, it was the cr this crazy punishment. Even if you went back and reverted mm -hmm. your save and made a, a clean install No, you couldn't even... You couldn't even get on, like, the free Xbox online service. Like, you were completely cut off. The, yeah. In fact, I think there was a period where they were breaking Xbox 360s with, like, a kill code. 
if wow. they found out it was act. Yeah. yeah. I think there was a controversy around that. I, I, yeah. You can't quote me on this because it's been so many years, but I think people were like, hey, wait a minute. You know, I know the guy was doing something against the rules, but you don't have the right to totally destroy their hardware. Well, some people said you're buying the license to use the hardware and not the actual hardware. That was, yeah, though. that whole issue. Oh my God. The, this whole gray area and their terms of service. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure I own the hardware because I got a physical thing. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's not like a disc where it's ambiguous where like the disc alone, I can't do anything with it. Yeah. So you know? if, or can you come to my house and take it out of my living room because I broke a rule? Like where, where does this stop? Is, was like yeah, part yeah, of the exactly. Problem. They but send it, the CIA to your house, <laughs> have a SWAT team, come, you know, <laughs> the geek squad. That's what they were originally there Oh, my there for. God. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the whole purpose. They were training them. <laughs> <laughs> Secret operatives. You buy something from Best Buy. You're only buying you the rights it, to it. They yeah. snipe you. And you don't, yeah. They come down there. The Geek Squad comes and raids your house. <laughs> oh, my God. See if you get a five-star wanted level from running from the Geek, geek Squad. <laughs> <laughs> well, All they have is tasers. So the the thing about the streaming, yeah, I'm I'm worried about the overall quality of the stream and stuff. But you know, you're right. Why not just have it a service where you can? It's like Redbox, but for games. You can down. You can take a Redbox movie and keep it for as long as you want, but you're going to be paying like a dollar a day for it or something more than that now. Yeah. It, same with Netflix. The the original Netflix service was they would send you a DVD. You could keep it for as long as you want, as long as you're paying your Netflix subscription. And if yeah. you if you cancel the subscription, they charge you your credit card for the whatever you have. Yeah, and that was that. Well, I think you have like a courtesy period when you cancel Netflix to get those well, discs back in. I but, don't know if yeah. if they still do this because I, I have Netflix, but I, I canceled the uh, send this this the DVD thing. Yeah, a lot of people. Uh, but it used to be used to be where you paid at like fourteen ninety nine a month, and you were allowed like 20 rentals a month or something like that. I don't know if they still do that. They have plans like that but, where you can rent. But my plan was like a two DVD a month thing or at a time. It's at a time. So you could yeah. watch one movie, send it back and get the next movie in your queue, but have the first one still. Like it just, you can only have two DVDs out at a time or oh, three okay. or Well, whatever I mean, they the used to have was. a limit on how many a month you could yeah. rent. Oh, there was okay. Two, there yeah. was two types of plans. There was like, like, like he said, like, 10 rentals a month or uh, unlimited, which is always like two bucks more, I think, and two at a time or something like that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, you could tier it, but with a limited cap of number of rentals with how many discs at a time you wanted or. See, was, why didn't uh, they set it up like you've heard of Gamefly, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, like that. I mean. Well, because then they need hardware and discs and, and mailing yeah, services. Yeah. The- there's a big yeah. problem with Gamefly of those discs getting stolen, too. Right, yeah. yeah. Stuff will get ripped right out of the mail sometimes. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it could happen. Uh, I I like the idea of being able to digitally get this game and rent it. The I think inst- they should have merged the two concepts into one. So you have the idea of paying a monthly fee for a service, and then you have the idea of renting a game and downloading it onto your hardware temporarily. You merge those. Okay, 20 bucks a month, you can rent as many games as your hard drive can hold. Uh, or maybe you just cap it, three games, who knows. And then, you know, once you're done with the game, you have to give it back. And the, the system, using cloud databases, confirms it's uninstalled from your console. What happens if uh, you, your internet's off, but you want to play the game you're renting? You're still paying that monthly service, but now you can't play the game because you don't have internet. Or their servers get DDoSed again. I would imagine, Ooh, like, if yeah. it's a rented game, there would be some kind of a, <clears throat> some kind of a code that, that links with the network that lets you know, lets, lets them know that you have the game installed, you're playing the game, and you had, when it comes to rented games, you would have. To, I can understand, like, doing it, like you said, have it downloaded, but still have it linked to the internet somehow to verify that your copy oh, is like still good. Oh, like a DRM, so constant they, like, connection. They, yeah, they knew that they were have they have to return the game, right? So they pulled their their hard drive out. You know, you just so, you just reminded me of the flaw in my plan because yeah, you have to, to in order for them not to just unplug their thing and have all these free games on this offline yeah. console. They, yeah, you would need to confirm the some online, kind of a so 
some kind of a ping, ping a code back and forth this, to the server. So you'd have to have online connection for for I would if for they were to do way. something like that. Yeah. But I think that you're going to get a much way. better product, and you're going to—it's going to be worth twenty bucks a month to download the game. Yeah, definitely. Well, most people aren't going to jump through the hoops of having a second PS4 that they keep on lo- offline. That they like, you know, because you'd have to have two modded PS4s—one where you could take the hard drive out and yeah. at least pull the data off it without modifying it or letting the system know it was modified. And then you'd have to have the fully hacked one that would run those games which you'd have to like tweak and stuff like that. Not many people are gonna go through those hoops. No, it's most easier people to just pirate. Would... It is well, no, it's easier just to pay the twenty bucks. Well, of course, but opinion. I mean if you're gonna do if you're gonna go through all the trouble of stealing a game, it's easier to just pirate it the old fashioned way, you know? Wouldn't it Oh be? yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, it's easier just to do that. Because like I mean, I guess there would be some people that would use this service as an easy way to get access to those games to, like, upload to, can't say Pirate Bay now because they're gone, but... <laughs> For now. Uh, it's just any other service that you could share games with, and that's fine. Don't say those are lost sales or anything because they never were going to buy them anyway. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it's, But most people are just want an easy way to do this and most people do not want to buy a second ps4 or track down a used one that they can fuck with so like modifying your business model to take care of pirates is kind of like silly in my mind because it's like i feel like you're losing out more yeah when you're just tiptoeing around like oh we have to prevent pirate loss yeah exactly it's i mean that's almost a whole separate issue but it, the streaming, I'm, I'm still hung That's up on that. That's why they went with streaming. I'd almost guarantee it. That could be it. I think, yeah, they're afraid of people being able to download the games. They probably looked through all these different scenarios and found out it's easy to somehow keep the game on your system, even if they don't want it there. Uh, but, I mean, Sony, we've been seeing, is not very good with uh, internet security or any of that. I mean, look at Sony Pictures. Look at this giant attack from Christmas. They couldn't recover for three days. It, they're not... They need new technicians. <laughs> it was more than three days. The whole system was down for three days, but then it was patchy for like yeah. days after it. Yeah, it was just this big, slow recovery. And all these people are getting their new PS4s and stuff. So you have this all these especially pissed off new customers. And then your old customers who are pissed because they probably got a new game for Christmas. They are making it right, it seems. They're trying to. You get like an extended five days on your PS Plus subscription now. Uh, just to that's only if you had one beforehand yeah. and then you can also so get what about all off. those people who wanted to you know get it because they got their ps4 for christmas like me well they didn't lose any money they just lost time they didn't spend yeah. the money to get it because they couldn't but it's frustrating for me because it's like i had a lot of time on my hands to play it and play it with uh yeah, people were off from work it's and school and yeah it, and so we were sucks. really excited and it was almost, I mean, thankfully we didn't have Destiny because I can only imagine the people who <laughs> got the PS4 and the Destiny together and you pretty much had a very, very expensive brick paperweight yeah. for a few days. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, uh, so anyway, what I was going to say is like, uh, I lost my, <laughs> I lost it. So I don't know, streaming games, I'm trying to get it back. I think the big problem, the big, big problem with this is PS3 is the current, like, titles that are dishing out. And I'm, Yeah, that's all they're putting on there. Yeah. So this isn't, like, new and upcoming games, which is one of the things we all have kind of skipped over in this topic so far. Keep in mind, this is games that have been released for a while now. This is game, These are games that were on the last-gen console for a long time. And here's the really weird thing. Uh... And I just tested this, I think it was two nights ago with Mojito. We were on the PS4, and I'm like, didn't they remake Grand Theft Auto Vice City for, like, not that long ago, and you can download it on your PS3? And she's like, yeah, yeah, they did. And we looked it up. Sure enough, there it is. Uh, And so I looked on the internet on my phone, found it. I'm like, oh, I want to go get this. So I go on the PS4's market, and it's not there. I'm like, why? Where's Vice City? I thought it was in their marketplace. I turn on my PS3 out of curiosity. There it is. 
So the store is blocked off to, to, for older PS3 titles. So you can't even download a PS3 game. You can't even rebuy a PS3 game for your PS4. So I, thought you, the, I thought that was the too. big thing. That's why I thought that was their big claim to fame. Exactly. Like, especially Sony. Like, always, you know, the backwards compatibility with Sony has always been a little bit better than Xbox until now. Hey, hey, hey. I'm going to give you a line. We thank you for our patience while we add to our PS3, PS4 library. <laughs> exactly. So that's and what... As a lot of people are... For me personally, I kind of skipped over the PS3 because there was no reason for me to give two craps about the PS3. Don't get me wrong. There's like a handful of games that were really good and I'm sad I missed them. Yes. But in the long run, I don't care. It like wasn't it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. And I even had a PS3 and it wasn't enough for me to just care. Yeah. So I like I would not pay that much for that service for PS3 games. Maybe if they started really throwing in like the best of PS1 and PS2. Yeah. I, and I, I showed you with the PS3, with my PS3, which does not play PS2 games. I don't have the very old backwards compatible one. I showed you were here. I put in a PS1 mm -hmm. game in my PS3 and it worked. I'm almost positive you can't do that anymore. And I think the reasoning is because of this service. I think this service was why they took away all backwards compatibility, even in the sense of rebuying a game. Because they want that monthly fee for old games. Oh, uh, uh, you think that's why? That's the th that's my theory. That this was the big plan. This was the plan all along because look, like I should. Grand Theft Auto Vice City came out on the PS2 years ago. I should be like in 2003, I think. I should be able to rebuy that game if you remastered it for HD. Why can't and it's in the same exact marketplace, just not on the PS4? Why? Why is that? Because it's the eventually same as, like, you can rent it. Maybe. No, it's it's kind of the same as um. Google Play, where if you're looking for a tablet and, you know, you have a tablet and a phone and you look and it'll tell you it's compatible only with, like, it won't even show things that I can't install if I'm looking on that device and not on my computer. So it's technically not compatible right now. They may change it in the future. They may not. It's up to the game developers, really, I would say. Yeah. I, I think this was the plan. This is just my theory, but... It no, I, I totally agree. It makes sense that this was the plan all along. But so they in my heart of hearts, all. I yeah. feel like you should be able to pay the monthly fee for the service and get like unlimited access. Or you should be able to buy the games. Yeah. like It should be one or know. the other, like iTunes. You can rent the movie or you can buy it. Yeah. Right. It's... I mean, that would be really cool, but, but what they've done now is, like, I can't even... If I wanted to, I can't rebuy a PS3 game I already owned, unless they remake it completely, just like they did Grand Theft Auto V uh, and games like that. So, you know, you can do all this transfer stuff that the, it, it's on the developer side. The developer has to decide, okay, we'll let them transfer. Like, Little Big Planet 2, all of your stuff, if you had it on the PS3, if you log into your account, will transfer to the, the new Little Big Planet 3. But isn't that made by Sony? Uh, it could or be. Or one of I its subsidiaries? That, I know that it was made by Media Molecule and then someone else took it over. It's no longer Media Molecule for Little Big Plant 3. But I don't know if they're both Sony-owned companies. I thought they were kind of independent a little bit. But I could be wrong. I didn't look into that too much. I just I was really excited because I played Little Big Planet 1 and 2 and all my stuff from both games transferred to this new one. I'm like, ah, oh, technology. I love it. But that was just the game developer doing that, you know. Sony, I, I, I'm just a little bit disappointed. I would love to rebuy some old PS3 games and just have them to play on my PS4. So, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I mean, I still have We've a PS3. We've been through this before, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, I still have that, <clears throat> so I shouldn't be complaining. But what, what if, uh, I mean, because the only okay. reason the PS4 is here is because Mojito had it already. What if I wanted to sell my PS3 to get a PS4? How much would I lose? That's crazy. Yeah. What were you going to say, Jamie? Okay, I did a little fact-checking on Wikipedia. So, you're, you're right. Medium Molecule and stuff, are they are the developers, but the publisher was Sony Computer Entertainment. Okay. So, they do own the rights. Okay. So, so, yeah, of course they would do that. Like, that's one of their titles. Yeah, Grand Theft Auto V. You can take your old character from the PS3 version and put him in the new online PS4 version if you want. 
but you can't play because they wanted to remake the game and re-profit off of it. You can't play the PS3 version on the PS4. You can't rebuy that version on the PS4. They had to remake the game completely. Which is no one thought anything right of it because all. they added all this stuff like new nicer graphics and and a few nice little features here and there. And yeah, but you're right. They're they're doubling profits, which is if if people are going to pay it, good on them. That's great. But this is a little bit too far for me. I don't want to pay twenty bucks a month to play games that were already that already got their money's worth. They they, they got their money for these games, especially ones they're the publisher of. I was going to say these are old games too, so twenty bucks a month is kind of really steep. Yeah, even the fifteen bucks a month is like, you know, what am I paying for here? What if you, what if you just would it be? I don't know. Would it be cheaper to find a cheap PS3 and buy that, and then find these cheap games? And just... I would think it depends on how many games you're looking at playing. If you have a yeah. very distinct set list of games. <laughs> Like I was no, I was gonna say if you have a distinct set of games that you're gonna play and they're all and you verified they're all on their network and they um they're not games where you're gonna sink like hundreds of hours into it. It's a very like short one done kind of thing. You probably would get a better value out of renting it, especially if you knew you were gonna have like a a giant chunk of time. Like say it's gonna be like December, you're gonna activate the account. Um, and you're going to have like a big long break. That would probably be worth it because then you could probably zip through a couple of those games within December. Yeah. But if you don't have a lot of time to play games and you have a big list or several titles that are going to be 100 plus hours, it probably would be more worth it in the end to find a cheap PS3 or borrow a PS3 from a friend or something like that. Yeah. And, like, pick up the titles you wanted. Yep, and here we go with having multiple consoles in your house. It's That's never going to stop now. I don't think that's ever (laughs) going to stop. And, and you know, Nintendo's the closest to making their consoles all go away. Because in their marketplace, you can buy older Nintendo games. Up through, I believe it's... I believe it's the... Not the Wii, but I think GameCube. I think they sell GameCube games, but maybe not Wii. Uh, don't quote yeah. me on that. I just know that I've seen definitely old retro titles in there. And they let you rebuy these things. You download them. That's it. There's no weird streaming service. There's no weird like rental. Like Super Mario Brothers? Yeah. Like old stuff. I, I wouldn't be surprised, though, if, if maybe they tried a different model. I, like a Redbox model where you still stream the game, but you only pay for it while you have the game in your possession, quote unquote. Maybe they don't stream it. You They let you download it. And then that might be a different way to look at it. Like... Redbox, you download the game, you get to, you pay for every week you have it, you know, five yeah. bucks a week, and then once you're done with it, you say done, and then send it. Oh, off. you go to their service and be like, I'm done. Okay, in- uninstalling game now. Yes, Beep. that would be kind of cool. Um, but uh, before we go any further, let me read this and then explain why I read it. Uh, this podcast is sponsored by Green Man Gaming. Green Man Gaming is a digital gaming marketplace featuring thousands of titles ranging from new AAA releases to up-and-coming indie games. With Green Man Gaming, you can purchase titles for several platforms, including Steam, Origin, Xbox One, PS4, and more. Throughout January, you can support this podcast by using the offer code EverythingNoob20OF, that's 20OF, to save 20% off select PC titles on GreenManGaming.com. That's EverythingNoob20OF, and save 20% on some... Ex- uh, to say, and I'm sorry, save 20%. Some exclusions do apply. Please see our show notes on this uh, episode for details. Uh, big, big thanks to Greenman Gaming. They are our first sponsor for the Everything New podcast. Yay! So we have this code. <laughs> we made it! <laughs> we have this code through January for you guys to use. Uh, I will link it in the chat here for you live viewers. It can be used one time on your... Uh, on your Greenman Gaming account. If you don't want to download a new client, you don't have to. You can just use Steam, get the Steam code for the game you buy, and off you go. Uh, so it's a really awesome service. They've been really, really nice to us. Uh, they don't normally do this code thing for everyone, but I asked them and they uh, they put something together for us. So big thanks to Greenman Gaming, uh, and we hope to do more with them in the future. For now, throughout January, this is your code for uh, for their service. So big Check thanks it out. To it's a good deal. Yes. Especially to fill out your 
gaming library for all the games you didn't get that you wanted. Especially since Christmas just ended, and maybe there was yeah. a few games you wanted. Yeah, uh, one game, I was going to say one game to consider would be Rising World, as I'm playing that on my channel, and a lot of people are like, oh, is it, is it good? Do you like it? Should I, you know, should I spend the money on it? They have that game in their library, so perhaps you can get some, uh, some monies off that. I've been waffling on PS4 titles. Like, I look and I'm like, well, I don't know. I Right now I'm like stuck between uh, Little Big Planet 3 and then it's like, I don't know what it is. <laughs> uh, Hidden See? Society kind of like game. I can't, it was something Secret 1888 World? or oh. not Secret World. Uh, it was like a Assassin's Creed kind of game, I guess. But yeah, I guess I wasn't guys, that into it if I can't remember it. Yeah. So we're all basically PC gamers, right? And, For the most part. But you guys have consoles. I don't have a console. I got a PS2. <laughs> Keep it because you <laughs> anyway, can't play crap on the I know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, tell me now. Oh, the order. If you 18, saw, 86. seriously, if you saw, if you saw like, uh, a game that you could get on Steam and you can get it on one of your consoles. Which one do you, would you buy it on? PC. Uh, Steam. Hands down. Because there's no guarantee I'd still be able to keep it on the console. And right, Steam has shown me no reason to fear in the future that they're going to shut that down. Because even if they pull it from the marketplace, they still will have it on their servers for me to download and use. You can, yeah, yeah you can Just always no one can buy it. it. It's like insurance. Exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, no, Jimmy's right. I think the only exception is like if you, if it's a game where literally all your friends are playing it on one of the consoles, but even in that, like you do have the console, so obviously you're going to, you'll buy games for it from time to time. So that choice will come up. Uh, but yeah, it just depends on wh who's playing it and what it is. But yeah, a lot of times I, I would generally go Steam too because my PC is something that I get to control. Like if I if I decide, oh, I don't like the graphics card anymore, it doesn't support like really ultra high graphics on this new game, uh, I can upgrade that. You know, it's it's at my See, discretion. I don't have to wait yeah. for a 10-year console to come out for, you know, whatever. Or <laughs> See, with this streaming situation that PlayStation has, if I had a PlayStation 4 and... Um, I wanted games. I would only ga get PlayStation specific games, games that I can't get on yeah. PC. And That's then I would essentially what I'm doing. I don't think I would actually go through this uh, this subscription plan because of the fact that they might give me a whole there might be a whole lot of games on there that I have on my PC already. So it wouldn't even bo I wouldn't even bother. But um, but yeah, I mean if I wanted to if I wanted to test out a game I could go to onlive.com and do the same thing, test the game out if I like it, because they give you 30 minutes for each game <clears throat> for free to test out the game before you buy or whatever you do. And they also offer Steam. Uh, you, you, buy, you can buy the games for Steam too. But, um, but with the PlayStation 4, you know, you've, you've, got, you've got the option. You, you either have the PlayStation specific games or you got the games that you can also get on PC. And for me, if I had a PlayStation 4, that's what I would do. I would just strictly stick with that. I would not go with this streaming subscription thing at all. I, that's just um, me. There is a, like, if you have PlayStation Plus, I don't know if it's out yet or if it's going to come soon, but they are planning on giving you, if on, only for the PS4, like, I think uh, a full game trial. If you have a PlayStation Plus account on a PS4, hmm. like oh. that's that's not for the streaming service. That's for like their digital store where you actually buy the games. Now this is what's weird because I forgot all about PS Plus during that whole conversation. Yeah, I know. It's like I, it's another thing. It's another service, so another monthly service. Mm -hmm. this is, so this is going to be the second one they have. That totally is not. Time. You know, I think it would be nice if you had PlayStation Plus and they gave you a big discount. Yes. To like kind of like plus plus your account. That, essentially. <laughs> that or this this crappy streaming service is just in PlayStation Plus because it should be. I would yeah, I would like raise it two bucks and give them the streaming service. Yeah. Because honestly, I look at the benefits of what PlayStation Plus you get 
And I'm kind of like really disappointed at what it costs per month because it's like yeah, you can play just... online and that's about all you're going to get. Well, they do the free games, which is weird because it's usually pretty good deals. I mean, uh... but you don't really get the free games. It's you only have them for as long as you have a PlayStation Plus account. Yeah. Okay, but that's still fair. I mean, I mean, yeah, no, it's you, fair. You I'm still just... get to play the game, and and maybe by the time you're done with PlayStation Plus, you're obviously done with your PlayStation and that game. So yeah, and then once you get well, your PlayStation suck. Plus back, kinda... you're back in the game. <laughs> that really sucks because you're kind of like locked in now. You got this game, and you know you got several. You had several free games, and you got this one game that you just can't stop playing, but you don't want to pay for the service anymore. But it was so a they free, locked you, know, you in. It was they a got free you game, and you in. can always buy the game outright. That's you true. Really yeah, want. you know, I, I guess. So I think for the price of free, technically, you can you can you know deal with the fact that you have to stay a plus member. I can see that. That's fine. It's like having a, a membership to an arcade, and then it expires, and then you can't go to that arcade anymore until you renew your membership. Yeah, I mean, I just for the price per month, though, and like you. Uh, it's not like the games, like the multiplayer games, are hosted on their servers either. It's true. Like, yeah. for the connectivity we had last night, uh, when we were playing Grand Theft Auto, I was really disappointed. I was like, this is, what was it? Like, it's 15 bucks. Uh, no, it's 20 bucks for three months of online service. And you don't really get much of it, because if you think about the amount of actual time you'll be using that, it's hmm. very little. It's highway yeah, robbery. True. Yeah. I know, I, I can agree. I, I think overall, though, it's not it's not a terrible service. I like the, the free game thing is kind of what s sells me on it. But uh, it's not the worst thing in the world. Xbox Live is the same way. You've got to pay and yeah, No, I always felt, like, scummy paying them for that. Also, the thing um, I would... I don't have a problem paying for it. It's the price point that makes me feel scummy because it's like, eh, I'm not, can I just like pay for hours of usage? <laughs> yeah. And here's the thing too, the, you're, you're, you, got, you have a data cap on your internet. I don't know mm -hmm. if you guys know that. There's a data, I got 350 gigabyte data cap. If I reach that at, before the end of the month, my internet speed just plummets. So yeah. with streaming these games, you're using up data your data cap and if, if you imagine some of these kids who play these games and if they know that they can't play this game you know because they have to you know uh, well actually when you're paying the monthly service you pay it for as long as you want right but even then you know <laughs> they're gonna be playing for hours and hours and hours and hours of streaming this game. I so hope not. I hope the data parents cap. come in and be like no you need to do your homework it's like, I, man, I could just imagine. Everybody's internet just plummets. My old internet at my last place was capped, I think, 150. And I went over that almost every month because of streaming to Twitch. Because I was, like, crazy streaming all the you time. You use more... Oh, watching streams, right? No, no, streaming too. Like, I yeah, was he was streamer. streaming too. Um, I don't know how that would affect... Because you are get your... You use more out. when you're streaming up as than pulling down. Uh, that doesn't make sense. Like, if, <laughs> you're yeah, providing the content. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, it does. That's it weird. does make sense because they'll, they're going to compress it and stuff like that. And it might get compressed along the way and stuff like that. And you're only downloading the data you need to download. Whereas there's going to be more going to Twitch than is actually even going to be put out. There's still the reason you're on the internet, basically. That. So that's yeah. why it's, uh, yeah. Okay, I get that. <sighs> I just, I don't know. I feel like that is going to be a problem for some people, and people are going to be really dissatisfied with that service because there are a lot of people who have data caps. And the uh, service is coming be... too early then because we're like Google Fiber, for example, is rolling out in a lot of places, and there could come a time where fiber optic internet is the new thing. You know, it is the it, new thing. It's the new thing, but we're we're still building it. You know, it's going to be a while before it is the standard. Just like dial-up was the standard for a while, now high speed is the standard. Oh uh, my gosh! Cable Have DSL you broadband. heard though? Like people are the uh, MPAA uh, are not happy about Google Gold Fiber. They feel like it's going to cost them 
uh, millions, if not billions of dollars in piracy because people can download movies even faster through Google Fiber. Oh, oh yeah, my of course God. They I'm dead serious. There was this like bogus That's study crazy. about how much money they would lose because now instead of 10 minutes for a movie, they get it in two. Whatever. Like, I don't even want to get into that because it's so stupid. Like It is. It, I'm so sick of hearing about piracy and blah, blah, blah. It's It's whatever. We're always... But it's important to pay attention because if you don't, then that's how the MPAA wins. No, you're right. You're right. It just that aside, <laughs> there's going to come a time where fiber optic internet is the internet everyone's using. And I think until then, this service is too soon because you're right. We have caps on our internet and it's going to, yeah. you know. That's going to be a Is thing. it too soon, though? Because there's some people who don't have caps, and this is how you push to get rid of those caps, is services like this. Yeah, but it's going to suck they'll, for those they'll realize, with caps. Oh, yeah, it's going to suck for a while, but that's how you get like a more open, unlimited internet. Because internet companies, especially like cell phone data, they love to cap how much data you can play with. And this is how you get rid of those caps, is by... Creating services that people love and use and are constantly hitting those caps. And then, like, those companies are like, look, this has to go away because we want more business. Yeah. They, they become the, the buying power to get rid of those caps. Like, legislation will get passed because they're going to pay politicians. Unfortunately, this gets really sticky and deep. <laughs> <laughs> and you know we sh we don't want to talk about politics here and stuff but like when you can get a business on your side that's when things change hmm you know you're right it's just gonna be a slaughter it's a long for a while. process yeah yes it's a really long it's process and it's, it's gonna be a slaughter for a while for sony getting all these complaints that the service sucks and they're gonna invest so much money trying to make the service better when really if they just wait till the technology I catches they up would just make their service secure because uh, I'm looking at PlayStation Plus and I'm like, I really don't want to give them my credit card. I would rather yeah, just they had a giant keep buying those gift cards. Yeah, I would rather keep buying those like PlayStation Plus uh, cards that I just put the code in every month because oh, I, should, uh, I don't I want them to have that. I should check my I don't dragon. Trust them to keep it. I should check safe. my Dragon's Profit uh, account and make sure that my station cash is still there. <laughs> Oh no! Because it's through Sony. <laughs> oh. oh no! Yeah, that's the kind of data that can, they can steal pretty easily. I didn't have people, that much anyway. Yeah, people aren't paying attention. Because that's what you have. You have station cash to them. Well, yeah, it, that's nuts. I I mean, I don't know. This whole service thing though is. <laughs> sorry, I I read something real quick and I lost track of what I was going to say. Uh, but yeah. I think internet will catch up eventually, but for now, yeah, this I, is, this I agree is with Jimmy. We we need Sony to secure themselves not only against credit card attacks but DDoS attacks as well because this was ridiculous. Yeah, before we have streaming, now we're going to stream the games and yeah, they'll DDoS themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're trying to stream all these games and they don't have the servers for it. It's crazy. Yeah, you're it probably right. I know it doesn't work like that, but <laughs> well, no. Um, if Okay, the only way to really stop a DDoS attack is buying more bandwidth. And if they're going to be streaming up, I hope they bought a ton more bandwidth to cover all that streaming they anticipate they're going to need. Which, for me, because they really get DDoSed a lot, and it seems to be very easily for long periods of time, I can't imagine they're, they've bought enough bandwidth to cover them. So... For everybody who's going to buy this uh, rental subscription fee, I'm very sorry to tell you, but you probably won't be able to use it for the first week it's available <laughs> because it'll be overloaded. Yeah. I, my advice would be to wait at least a few weeks after this rolls out and just kind of see what the general public thinks of it. I would wait a few months. Let them add more games to the library. Let the price come down because nobody, uh, quote unquote, wants it at that price. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a stupid price for a service that no one has any idea. You you still get a seven day free trial. Let's not snub that. Seven days. Yeah, okay. I, I mean that's nice. It lets you in there to look at the library and to try it. But 
from what I've heard about the buy the game to stream it uh, service, it is pretty junky still. I I don't know. The, let's look at the one plus side to this this service uh, that I I have wanted to mention. There is a plus side. There, as someone who like sees all these games coming on the market all the time and bitches and bitches and bitches because I don't have the money to buy all these damn games and I don't have the time to play them all. A mm-hmm. rental service in general like this one, maybe not this one, but like it would be kind of cool because oh, I could yeah, finally no. play these games without obligating all my money and. Hands down, when I saw this news story, I was excited because I was like, yeah, rentals are coming back. Because I remember renting so many games as a kid. And honestly, looking back, like, while I was always sad to give the game back, it was probably the best thing ever. Because for most games, you're not going to play it more than a couple of weeks. Yeah, exactly. There's only some games worth buying. And they're the ones that are like Call of Duty, for example, because... You're going to be playing that with your friends all the time. Like, that's the kind of game that's really recreational, and your buddies get together and be like, yeah, let's play Call of Duty tonight. And you all jump online and play, or Grand Theft Auto, you know, multiplayer games like that. Great. That's like really cool for buying. But games like platformers and stuff, like, that, that's fantastic for renting. You, you play through the story, you get, you know, what you need, and then you send it back. Right, right, yeah. Yeah. Well, so, you know, I mean, even like, the Call of Duty, too. I was thinking, like, what if, like, you know, you got a Telltale game where, you know, uh, it's not a timed rental. Instead, it's whether or not you finish it. <laughs> yeah. So if you don't finish it, you still have the game. It still lets you play the game until you actually finish it. And then once you finish it, boop, that's it. The game can no longer be played. That's, that's cool. Uh, so huh? you pay for a playthrough? Yeah. That's kind of cool, I guess. <laughs> Of what if you want to replay it with a different set of like choices? Oh, I guess you'd screwed. have to just buy another playthrough. <laughs> Actually, with Telltale Games, I don't think there is any other choices. It's just you just play it. Well, that's the whole point. No, of Telltale no, no, Games. no. You make yeah, they have like you. this. You make choices and they affect the story. Yeah, and you get different outcomes. Oh, those kind of. It's oh, a I see choose your own adventure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, um, Back to the Future is not like that. That was it's the a telltale early years, game. Though. The telltale game of Back to the Future, yeah, isn't like that. You you have to do it exactly like you're supposed to. It's it's part oh. of the story. It's a puzzle. Well, a lot of their newer stuff is like choose your own adventure stuff. Ah, uh, gotcha. It's like an interactive storybook, pretty much. I'm curious to see what they do with uh, Minecraft. I'm just. <laughs> I, I, I'm excited because they, they do weave a good story, but at the same time, I'm like, what do you do for story mode of, like, like, I just, I can't boggle it, and it's kind of the same thing where they're like, oh, they're going to do a Minecraft movie. What? what? Yeah, what? Why? What? Like, all I can imagine you would do for a Minecraft movie is, like, make a movie about a fake YouTuber who has made his millions off of Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> It's so true. <laughs> oh, man. We just watch a lot of YouTube. Maybe that's just funny to us, but that is so true. When I think of the Minecraft story, I don't think of the game itself. I think of people playing it and, and everyone's story about Minecraft. Like, but Notch, I mean, it- you know, I, I imagine it being a movie about Notch or a big YouTuber or a group of big YouTubers. I don't imagine a movie within the world of Minecraft having any kind of story because Minecraft no. doesn't have a story. Well, they're trying to give one to it, you know? I know. And they just had, like, this big debacle about it. And the, the I think the director of the movie left because he, he thought he, he had a good story. He, and, and Mojang was he like, wanted eh, to make it's it not Goonies. that good. He wanted to make it like Goonies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where they discover, I guess they discover a Minecraft world. I don't know. <laughs> See, I wouldn't like that. I wouldn't like the movie if it took, like, real world people and stuck them in animation like that. It would be kind of strange and jarring. I like it better if it's just either animated or live action. Yeah. Yeah. How would they do a live action for Minecraft though? They've they've done. Are like, they going to have people like wear Avatar. cardboard? Cardboard. <laughs> cardboard. No, it's not like seventies Doctor it's Who. It's CG. It'd be like da- Avatar. Yeah. Oh. There's it's a lot cheaper. of heavy CG, but like real people actors instead of square people. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So they'll have Steve like like Avatar. Like a dude. <laughs> but it would look like weird and 
kitschy like if they did that though like all those blocks and then like just <laughs> plop somebody in on a blue screen no they need to consult youtubers who have made minecraft live action things on their channels like because there's some really good ones out there they need to consult those guys because i bet you they've thought of this extensively and it just seems like they're they're just they're doing this with hollywood it's mojang and hollywood talking about it it's there's no community and that's the big disappointment with minecraft these days they their whole sense of community and everything has just gone out the window they don't consult us with anything anymore it's just and that was just microsoft's promises that they would never do that to the community but it's already been done they did it. it was before microsoft even came into the picture like the Ever since probably the 1.56 updates, like people are like, why are you guys adding all this weird stuff to the game? Like, have you even been listening to what we've been saying? You know, remember so all they that added horses? On? The horses were cool. Like, there's always something cool to be played with, but there's like, I remember like a couple people I watched are like, why can't we scramble eggs yet? Like, why, why can't we eat these? <laughs> why do we have this food that we can't eat? You know, and. We could throw them and make chickens. It's just stuff like that, like little things that people have been asking for for, I think, a long time. Maybe it's just the people yeah. I watch asking for it. I don't know, but it, it sucks to see that Minecraft completely has abandoned its community, in my opinion. And Hero Brine still hasn't been added to the game. Yeah, I know. Someone really argue. chaps my ass. <laughs> that. Maybe that's what the story is about. That, see, that would be good. That would be. I think that is a good direction. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like exactly. this community. The community believes in this thing that you know isn't there, and it's. You can have some guy stuck on an island somewhere, and he's got to survive. And there's this hero, Brian. You can even have other characters in there, and have you a know, creeper. You know, have some kind of Lego movie it out. Um, which kind of makes it a cheap knockoff, which means the movie won't be really very good. Just make it to where Hero Brian is trying to destroy the world of Minecraft, and or maybe Steve he just is wants there to, to be save our the day. friend. That could be. <laughs> Jimmy's it's really hugs. creepers thinking, thinking positive here on a, on the issue. <laughs> make it like Paranormal I'm... Activity, but with Hero Brian. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> cameras and stuff <laughs> somewhere between Five Nights at Freddy's and Paranormal Activity. It's <laughs> the Minecraft movie. <laughs> Nothing about building. That would be oh. so awful. <laughs> Worst movie ever. Oh. It might be scary, though. It might be. be pretty terrifying. <laughs> what is that? That's a I, sheep. I, oh, why is it made of cubes? I think that's what most old people go through. <laughs> There's no way they can make a real life movie out of it. I don't see it. Old people who don't understand Minecraft. It's awesome to watch them play Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that? That's a pig. No, that's a couple of cubes slapped together colored <laughs> pink. Yeah. What the hell is that green thing over there? <laughs> so, I don't know. Minecraft movie is... You know, I got one of those in my pants. <laughs> oh, whoa. <laughs> whoa, too far. Whoopsie! This is the, I should. I'm sorry. I should have steered us off Minecraft a long time ago. That wouldn't have happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That would. You're really happened. excited about this movie. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Anyway, yeah. So that's basically the show. We're almost out of time here. Uh. So any last thoughts though on the the Sony streaming games? Do you think? Do you think this will come up with like another service like Steam might look in, into this like renting games or streaming them? You know what? I, if Steam said the exact same like shit even at the same price point, I would probably hands down be like fuck yeah. Just because better selection. I because the fact one, that better selection play it on anything. So they would handle it. Yeah, they would handle it good. It would probably be even better than on live. I think that if they did something like that it could open the doors for people to play their high-end games on other, you know, other devices besides their high-end computer. Mm -hmm. Well, there you know is I mean? a way to stream the games you do own to your devices and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, they have I, the, it's, it's the Steam Box thing. The whole, yeah, you make your computer a dedicated Steam Box and you can stream it to all the computers in your network. Yeah. Which is nice. That's cool. But I mean, could you imagine like being able to do that online? That'd be awesome. 
that's that's awesome because I actually saw that feature. Uh, I put Steam on my laptop, and then all of a sudden, all these games in my library that I haven't installed on my laptop were playable, and you could stream them from your computer. That's yep. cool. So technically, they already offer that service just in their own way. Well, that's you true. have to have good internet on yeah. both sides. It's on you. Here's the problem with with uh, yeah, I guess if we're in the Starbucks you're sitting in versus the internet at home, but the problem with this Sony thing is like it's. There's internet you control, your internet, you know, the price you paid for your internet determines your speed. But then there's internet you don't control, and that's Sony's. And you have no idea how many people are going to be streaming at the same time, when the games you're paying money for are going to be playable. And that's the biggest, that's the scariest part about this. And perhaps it's already a non-issue. Maybe they've already have it, they have it all figured out. We're worried for nothing. Here's another perk I thought of. Like, unlike Netflix, though, which will lose movies due to contracts and stuff, PlayStation probably will not have that problem. Yeah. But there's like, more... Like, once it's in the library, it's probably there to stay. There's more TV shows and movies than there are video games, too. So, they're the... Yeah. And they're only limiting it to PS3. So, they don't have as many, you know, titles well, to deal with. Well, Netflix doesn't lose it because of server space. They lose it because contracts end and they don't want to re-sign for that particular movie or DVD or whatever. Oh, uh, yeah. That's a good point. Like, PlayStation game. won't be losing the rights to those games, so they, once it gets pushed to the service, like, it's there to stay. Do you think Gamefly will try to offer a service like this? Or now, now maybe not, because Sony's trying to have their own. They're not going to allow Gamefly streams to be on their console. I imagine Gamefly's going to do something to try to, like, make sure they stay competitive. Uh, I think they offer some kind of streaming service, but like it's through, like retro games only. The last I looked, now I don't keep up with GameFly, so don't quote me on this. But I feel like there was really old retro games you could stream through GameFly uh, on your web browser. Hmm. You could do that with Twitch. They offer some like weird games you can basically stream within Twitch. You can even you can even live stream the game you're streaming. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, it's like this weird. I I gotta look at it again. It was a long time ago. I saw that, and maybe it's I'm totally wrong. But the I think there's games on Twitch that you can play, and then you can also hit a live button, and people can watch you play that game. I saw that too. I'm not sure what that is. It's interesting. It's <laughs> I it's never super, clicked it. It's a super poor man's way to live stream because I guess, you, you don't uh, own the game, you don't have the software to do it. But you could just go on it's, Twitch and just do everything for free. <laughs> it's just a Flash game of some sort. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we are out of time, but uh, big thanks to Greenman Gaming being our first sponsor of the Everything New podcast. If you guys want that code again, Everything New 20 of the code, uh, and details on exclusions and all that, please visit everythingnoob.com. Hit up our show notes for episode 113. All of that's going to be there. Uh, links to Greenman Gaming as well. And uh, all the things we talked about as every week, as we do every week. Um, we will see you next week on the Everything New Podcast. Signing off. Something I was going to say something else, and I just said signing off. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Jimmy's trying to, Bye, great. I love it. Jimmy's trying to throw up <laughs> at my horrible outro. <laughs> <laughs> all right. See you next time. Bye. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Everything Noob Podcast. Hit up everythingnoob.com for our show notes, blogs, YouTube and Twitch channels, previous episodes, and even a t-shirt store. Please game responsibly, and we'll see you next week.